25 yards from front to rear, and it's full of a lot of deep sand, and it's tough to shoot out of. And Harney, out of the rough, got it home, a shot that a lot of the fellows have not been able to make today. I think uh, a lot of congratulations are to go to the greenskeeper in line, Massachusetts, for the condition of the course. After a very severe winter here in New England, this course was in trouble, and they have had to really groom it and get it ready for this test by the world's greatest golfers. On Thursday, 150 players teed off in the first round. 136 pros, 14 amateurs. The field then was cut after the first 36 holes to the low 50s plus tie. And that brought us to a total of 51 for today. And here is an amazing statistic, thinking about the wind and the toughness of this course. Through the first three rounds, that means 150 players each of the first two rounds for 351 players in the third round. 351 tries at this course. There have been only 13 par or better rounds. There have been eight par 71s. There were two subpar 70s, Harney and Cupid. And at 69, the best rounds of the tournament, two under Palmer, Finsterwald, and the first day leader, Bob Gaeta. The lowest score in so far today is Gary Player's 296. Player had a very fine round here this afternoon. Scores are not easy to come by. The golf course is beating the players in this instance, and they don't like it. This is Jimmy Clark from 25 feet. Thirty-six holes on this final day of the USGA Open, as always. The pins to answer a lot of requests that we get on this question are not changed between the morning and afternoon rounds. They do, however, cut the greens between rounds and they roll them to take out the spike marks. Jimmy Clark is par four. Now Paul Harney, who made a fine recovery shot out of the rough, will try for his birdie. And remember, Harney at the moment is just two shots behind the leader, Jackie Cupid. And Cupid, the Texan, still has a lot of holes to play. Now Finsterwald tied to the lead going into this morning's third round, having a lot of trouble all day today. Harney reading the green to break right, right at the cup, and it did, but not quite enough. Leaves himself 16 inches now away from that hole. This is for the par four on the 17th hole. So Paul Harney gets his par four. He stays nine under par of the tournament, just two shots behind the leader. Jimmy Clark also had his par. We'll have more of the action in this final round of the 63 USGA Open Championship in just a moment. Here's Paul Harney ready to tee off on the final hole for him here. And at the moment, Paul Harney is nine over for the tournament. Only two strokes behind the leader, Jackie Cupid. And Jackie Cupid just bogeyed the 12th hole, so Jackie Cupid goes eight over par, which only puts him one stroke ahead of Arnold Palmer and Tony Lima. Arnie, a tremendous hitter, good close-up, former Holy Cross golf captain. Now pretty much of a country club pro at the Sunset Oaks Country Club in Sunset, California. Here's Jimmy Clark. He's a veteran, just returned to the tournament tour.
And you can see that ball bounce in the rough. You can also see the other marker put down by the four caddies. So it looks like both these drives will be in the rough. The leader in the clubhouse right now is Gary Player at 296, but they're closing in on Jackie Cupid. Jackie Cupid bogeyed the 12th. He is now only one ahead of Tony Lima and Arnold Palmer. You know, NBC continues to bring you the best in sports entertainment the year round. Each Saturday and Sunday throughout the regular season, it's Major League Baseball. You'll see the top teams in each league as they drive to the finish of their pennant races. Now, tomorrow afternoon, it's the Chicago White Sox meeting the Cleveland Indians. On Tuesday, July 9th, in color from Cleveland, the 1963 All-Star Baseball game. And in October, the sports highlight of the year, the World Series. Now, for you golf fans, we've brought you the Palm Springs Classic, the Tournament of Champions, the Buick Open, and the Thunderbird Classic, leading up to this USGA Open Championship, the biggest of them all. There's still more coming your way, because on September 7th and 8th, it's the World Series of Golf, pitting the winners of the Masters, Jack Nicklaus, the PGA champion, whoever that might be, he decided later, the British Open, and the winner of the 63rd USGA Open Championship. Then in October, it's the first live network coverage of the Lady Golfers in Action, the Ladies Professional Golf Association Championship. These and many more exclusively on NBC, the top network for sports. We're following now Paul Harney and Jimmy Clark down the fairway. Paul Harney right now is only three strokes or two strokes behind the leader now as Jackie Cupid lost another. Cupid is plus eight for the tournament. Lena is plus nine along with Arnold Palmer. Paul Harney is plus ten. Bruce Crampton is three strokes behind along with Billy Maxwell and Julius Burroughs. So with this win as flighty and as vigorous as it has been, this championship is still wide open. I have to be a bit quiet because Jimmy Clark out there looking at his ball in the rough is waiting for Ross Kuhn and Sam Snead to finish putting out on 18. I guess he's going to play short. A lot of the players have been doing this. It's amazing the drives have been short here because you don't get much roll on this fairway. It's a little dead. You, the ball lands and doesn't roll very far after it does land. So some of the players this morning and this afternoon have been playing up close and then chipping onto the green, hoping to get their par by one putting. It's been fairly successful, but perhaps Jimmy Clark is going to go for it. He is using a wood, as you can see. He's out there about 220, 230 yards, about 180 yards to come in. The applause you hear is for Sam Steed and Ross Coon, who just put it out here on the 18th. Jimmy Clark hitting. It bounds down to the left-hand side of the fairway. That's where the fans are pointing. It's still in the heavy rough. And now to Paul Harney. Harney only two strokes off the pace. Ten over for the tournament. You might have seen him yesterday on, or last weekend, that is, on NBC TV as he came in even, even with Arnold Palmer at the... Thunderbird, Paul Harney. He's going to try and make it. Right. He does. And he rolls over into the heavy rough. You can see the huge trees are overshadowing the green here right now. Makes it a little difficult to see that ball, but it did roll over. Here's a correction on the score. We understand that Paul Harney is just one behind the leader. Jackie Cupid is still our leader by one stroke. Palmer, Harney, and Lima are all a stroke behind. Now to the 16th and Jim McCarthy. Well, down here at 16, Bruce Crampton just coming out of the trap. And we might mention that as uh, Jackie Cupid has faltered a little bit, these two fellows down here become in contention. Bruce, 10 over, playing with Billy Maxwell who is also 10 over. Both boys up here on the green. Now Crampton is going to mark. He's about eight feet above the hole. And 
That's Crampton right there. A tough putt in front of him. Crampton uh, has played this hole well to date. Whereas it's been a bogey hole for a lot of people, he has had three threes, one right after another. Maxwell's played it even better. He's had two pars and a birdie at that this morning. This is a putt that has been missed frequently and to the right on the low side. And it's happened once again, and Crampton will have to be content with a bogey four. The pin now being removed. I mentioned something about that in a minute. A four for Crampton, and he goes 11 over. If you noticed uh, that the pin has been left in, whereas on previous Saturdays you've uh, seen it taken out, that's because this tournament is of course being played under USGA rules as distinguished from those of the PGA which require it to be taken out from within 60 feet. And now Billy Maxwell with a five footer to remain at 10 over. For Maxwell, a par three, he remains 10 over, and let's now go to Bud Palmer at 18. The ball you see right there is Paul Harney's chip. As I mentioned, his long second shot went over the green. He chipped down, it rolled beyond. He's left himself about 10 feet. He is only one behind the leader. It's Jackie Cupid now. Jimmy Clark is putting. Clark is plus 28 for the tournament out of it. And he'll take a, probably tap this in for a bogey five. That is a very important part coming up. Paul Harney. position. The puck will break slightly to the left. Harney is only one stroke behind the leader, Jackie Cupid. Three people are chasing Jackie. Harney, Palmer, and Lima. Bruce Crampton, Billy Maxwell, and Julius Burris are all three strokes behind that. Paul Harney. Very great favorite here as he's from Worcester, Massachusetts. had two pars and a bogey on this hole. This morning's round was a very fine 73. In fact, he and Dan Sykes had the lowest rounds of the morning. That shows you how strong the wind was blowing. A two over par 73. He started out three strokes behind our leader, Jackie Cupid. A very important putt for Paul Harney. him in as our new leader at 294. We'll have more of the 63rd National Open in just a moment. Now let's watch Sam Sneed and learn how to get the feel of a winning golf shot.
Well, that's the 16th tee you're looking at up there. Tony Lima, as you can see on the scoreboard, nine over for the tournament, playing with uh, Walter Bergamo. And the hold up there is because of some action down at the 16th green. That's water right there. And that shot was coming up from the back of the 16th green. Dave Love Jr. of Charlotte, North Carolina, wedging from the back to about 15 feet beyond. Love, 15 over for the tournament, and still in contention down here, Julius Boris at 11 over. Boris will be putting for a birdie. That's Love on the right, Boris the heavier. Julie, who's been hitting the ball magnificently, not putting very well, though, having a lot of trouble with it. Love still away. That's Tony Lima, and you can imagine what he's looking at. It's the scoreboard up near the 16th tee. Lima now nine over, one stroke out at the moment. He'll be playing down here next. That's Dave Love. Love, just a shade low, a groan, as he will settle for a four. And now as he taps it in, Julius Boris will have about a foot downhiller, which could put him right back in the ball game. Boris, like Sneed, who went by here before, a member of the Wilson advisory staff, also, a great favorite in New England. He grew up in Bridgeport, became a tremendous success there as an amateur. One, among other things, at Connecticut. Both the open and the amateur. And she had no trouble with that putt. And now, Boris, by rolling in that birdie here at 16, goes to 10 over. That puts him just two out, and he has the 17th and 18th ahead of him, and Cupid, eight under, is not in yet by any manner or means. Now looking back toward the 16th tee, and that's Walter Bercamo, and Bercamo, too, is in. He's well in contention here, only 10 over. And Bercamo dumps his in the bunker guarding the right front of the green. And now Tony Lima. Lima, we repeat, is nine over par. <laughs> Getting a laugh up there. Trying to grass up. And I noticed that uh, some of it went one way and some went the other. That uh, gives you an idea what that wind is like. Now Tony said. And for Lima, a uh, beauty. He is stopped about 12 feet short of the flag here at 16. And smiling about it. We'll have more of this 1963 USGA Open Championship in just a moment. Now, we pause briefly for station identification.
Still marching down here to 16, Tony Lima and Walter Bercamo. Tony Lima trailing the leading Cupid by just one stroke, and Jackie playing in back of Lima, in case you're wondering. Walter Bercamo, a stroke back. He's 10 over par. Walter known more for his match play ability, actually, than his medal play. He won the PGA at that. And there's Tony over there. Lima hitting the ball very well and in great position on this hole. Probably the closest we've seen since this morning whose play was finished. Uh, the one great shot then being one that Don January rolled in and out of the cup would have been a one, of course. The hand for Lima. Water Bergamo now getting in the trap to uh, check things. The sand play has been sensational. And one reason we may have mentioned earlier uh, is that the sand here is of an excellent consistency and constant. It's fairly light, easy to play out of. Bergamo coming up with a good one about four feet beyond and gets the kind of hand you deserve for a shot like that. And while we're waiting, let's go on over to Jim Simpson at 15. And there on your screen is Arnold Palmer about 35 feet away from the pin. This would be a birdie putt should he make the long one uphill. He's playing with Dean Refram and of course Palmer right now is one shot in back of Jackie Cupid who is back of him on the course. These are Palmer's birdie chances 16, 17 and 18 or else have Cupid come back to him about 35 feet uphill for the bird. Arnie's army is here watching. Here's the putt. Coming up and just by on the right hand side. Arnold Palmer misses his chance for the bird that would have taught him. Back to 16 and Jim McCarthy. At 16, Tony Lima making a birdie try, 12 footer. Tony low by about a foot. A tap in and he remains as he was when he came in here nine over par. Walter Bercamo left with a four footer downhill. This uh, 53 PGA champion by the way is regarded as one of the great short putters of the game. And you see why. He's the first one to make that particular putt that we've seen uh, come through here this afternoon. Over to Jim Simpson now at 15. There's Dean Refram with a short two inch putt for his par four as he just had his third shot. And here's Arnold Palmer. It could be tricky for Palmer about two feet downhill. He's got to make this one now of course to remain for this particular round, three over and nine over for the tournament. One shot in back of Jackie Cupid. There's his par four. Arnold Palmer remains nine over par one shot in back of Jackie Cupid. We'll have more of the action in this final round of the 63 USGA Open Championship in just a moment. Well, the next shot you see will be Arnie Palmer there teeing off at 16. Palmer's had three threes here and he could sure use a birdie for a change. One behind the leader. Arnie is safely home at 16, about 30 feet above the flag. That's to the left as he'd play it. In good shape. <clears throat> Playing with him, Dean Refram. 
Dean giving it a good run for a while. But he has slipped and gone to 17 over par. And Refram also safely home at about 35 feet uh, to the right and rear as they march down here. Let's go to Jim Simpson at 15. And on the fairway on 15 is Jackie Cupid with his second shot. Here it comes from about 140 yards away. In the rough to the right of the green. And that will be a difficult pitch for Jackie. Coming out of the rough, off the collar, and up next to the pin. He leads by one shot. Arnold Palmer and Tony Lima. Playing with him is Dow Finsterwall, who was even after the first two rounds, but this morning went to a 79. Dow, the choice of many, he's been hot over these last five weeks. He won the 500 festival. He has scored high in the last four tournaments and has won more than $22,000 over the last five weeks. Here comes Dow Finsterwall. And his shot is short and on the right side, sneaking down over the hill toward the bunker. So both Dow Finsterwall and Jackie Cupid will have difficult shots to the green in order to get their par fours. We'll have more of the 63rd National Open in just a moment. Right now, here's Sam Sneed with two great secrets to winning golf. Down at 16 on the par three, 175 yarder at the back of the green, Dean Refram there in one. And by, by a good five feet, that long lag putt of reference, downhill and to the left. But the putt that really counts down here is the one fellow got to try for. Arnold Palmer, about 30 feet above and to the left of the hole as he played it. This putt is a downhiller as well. And to repeat something we've said often this afternoon, this putt, be it short or long, has invariably been hit to the low side of the hole. Palmer, a stroke behind the leader. At this point. above the roar, that just means that the 1960 Open winner is tied for the lead in this one. And now back to 15 and Jim Simpson. There's Jackie Cupid off the green, and he has now been tied by Arnold Palmer, and he has a difficult shot out of the rough from about 25 feet away. He must stop it close enough to get his par. Here's the little chip. It might run too strong, but it runs... Yeah. Cupid goes seven under and has grabbed back the lead within 30 seconds. Jackie Cupid, one of nine children, one of five golfing brothers, 25 years old, tips his hat to the huge crowd here at 15 with one of the most difficult little soft pitch shots out of the rough, has grabbed back the lead. He has gone seven over par, and Palmer at eight over par remains a shot back. Burroughs and Lima are now two strokes off the pace. This is Dal Finsterwall with his putt for a par. And it has left everybody here at 15 gasping. Finsterwall drops into his putt for the par and remains eight over for the round. 
Now let's go up to 17, and here's Chick Hearn. At the 17th, Arnold Palmer, whose Arnie's Army just gave him a tremendous ovation when he made the deuce, and that made the chip by Cupid, and Cupid knew what that loud cry meant even more difficult. Palmer reaching back for a little extra. And his tee shot is magnificent. 260 yards into the wind and right out in the middle of the fairway. What a shot by Palmer. Arnold with that pressure putt. And Tony Lima up around the green of 17, chipping too strongly out of a trap back into the crowd and way off the green. Dean Refram, the youngster who played football at Michigan State. And he too cracks a beautiful drive out into the fairway here on the par 4 17th. We'll have more of the action in this final round of the 63 USGA Open Championship in just a moment. This is the 16th green once again. Jackie Cupid has just landed on here safely. He's about 35 feet to the left and front. As you heard just a moment ago, he regained the lead by chipping in on 15. Playing with him, Dow Finsterwald, who uh, has been beset by trouble today. Dow 16 over. Coming up with his shot. And he, too, is on the green. Once again, you can see the ball land without any stuff on it. The wind behind it taking it off. Finsterwald walking along dejectedly. Doing very well after two rounds. That's he there on the left with the white hat. Repeat that Jackie Cupid just regained the lead. The Western Open champion of 1962 picked it up by chipping in on 17 just after hearing the roar down here. That could mean only one thing, and that was that Palmer had gotten a birdie. And uh, now let's go over to 17 and Chick Hearn. Arnold Palmer, gray slacks, red sweater, blue golf glove, and that ever-present cigarette walking nervously up the fairway so that he can get a better looking, a better view of this rolling green. Both he and playing partner Dean Refram hit tremendous drives here. Refman cut the corner a little bit more on the dog leg, 17th, which reaches out 365 yards. And Palmer's straightaway tee shot in length actually outdistanced a Refram by about 20 yards. But nonetheless, because of coming just around the bunker there, part of the dog leg, Refram will shoot last. Palmer with a sensational putt on 16, only to be matched by the magnificence of a chip shot by Jackie Cooper. Palmer one shot back. He can hit either a nine or a wedge from where he is. He's about a hundred yards out. Throws it at the tree trying to draw the ball. Looks like a beauty. Comes up. But because of the contour of the green, that swell in the middle of the green, some people like to call it a hogback, the ball wouldn't roll straight. It caught that rise and fell away from the hole finally at dying moments. He will have about 18 feet over that ridge for his birdie putt. And if he could get it, he would tie Jackie Cupid for the lead of the 1963 USGA Open Championship at Brookline, Massachusetts. First prize money, $16,000, and all the glory that goes with it. Here's Jackie Cupid now, down on the 16th. Jim MacArthur looks as though Jackie Cupid might have a question for one of the USGA officials there. Uh, he apparently uh, called one of the officials over here. I, I can't hear, hear MacArthur. Well, here's Cupid now. Stepping off his putt down here at 16. Jackie with about 40 feet. 
Looking that over very carefully. This putt is pretty tough because he is going to have to swing around from left to right. And the one thing he doesn't want to do is let this one get away from him. He's going downhill. And I'm sure he knows as well as anybody who's played this green that when it gets by the hole here, it's apt to keep right on going. There have been several go by. Uh, well, uh, Bob Charles, for one, was about 15 feet in the direction up there of Cupid's and came by at least eight this morning. Becky Cupid in front by a stroke. Arnold Palmer trailing him by what? Excellent putt because, although he missed it, he left himself just about the right distance. That is, the ball was hit to what would have been hole high and only is about a foot and a half below the cup, the straight up pillar left. Now, Dow Finsterwald, who hit his uh, tee shot past the flag by about 25 feet, also going downhill in this other bowl shaped green. And there's a case of another one that did get away. One of the best putters in the game, Finsterwald, has gone by by about four feet. To Chick Hearn at 17. About a foot pass and the grimace on the face of a man who has won $401,000 on the and tour. Still ahead by one stroke, Jackie Cooper with his try for a par at 16. Bangs it right in the center for a par three, retains the lead by a stroke. And to check her in again at 17. Coming down to the final hole on the 72 hole route of the USGA Open. 1963 style. Here's young Dean Refram from Chicago. Grew up adjacent to Medina Golf Club. Used to tight, narrow courses. In the first three rounds, 72, 71, and 80. Having his troubles here this afternoon. A very fine birdie putt for Dean Refram. Dean was one over par 36 in the front side. On the back side, he ran into two double bogeys, three single bogeys, and that's his first birdie. Palmer in the tournament, 73, 69, 77 this morning's round. Opened this afternoon by bogeying the first and second hole. He bogeyed the eighth, and he bogeyed the 11th. He has fashioned birdies on 10, and as you just saw, on 16. He's a shot behind Cupid. Palmer putting on the 17th for his par four. Arnold Palmer leaves the 17th, going nine over par for the tournament, giving Jackie Cooper now a two-shot lead as he moves away to the 17th. And we'll have more of the 63rd National Open in just a moment. Now watch Sam Snead show you one of the distant secrets to power golf. The 17th hole now. Reminding you again, it's a sharp dog leg left, 365 yards and par four. And on this hole now, a young man who may be destined for uh, perhaps the greater reward tonight than he ever dreamed possible at a young age, Jackie Cooper. Jackie, 5'9", 175 pounder, born down there in Longview, Texas. Turned professional in 1960. A most likable youngster. Cupid. 
spells his name C-U-P-I-T. He says, if you want to remember how to say it properly, just remember Q-stick, like in pool. It's Cupid. Winner of two tour championships. The most recent was the 62 Western Open at Medina. This is his third Open tournament. He tied for ninth in the 1961 Open at Oakland Hills after shooting a third round 67. And then last year, he tied for 17th over at uh, Pittsburgh. Jackie makes the tour with his lovely wife and youngster. She says one of her biggest jobs in the tour is getting babysitters. Dow Finsterwald, with whom he is playing, has had a most disappointing day. Dow, 73 in the opening round Thursday. A brilliant two under par, 69 yesterday. Came back this morning after being in a three-way tie for the tournament lead going out into the third round. He had a 79. He turned the front side today, six over in 41 in this final round. Now here is Jackie Cupid. Jackie conferring here with a more veteran player and perhaps getting some sage advice. Dow Finsterwald speaking with him. And you can imagine the pressure that this 25 year old Cupid boy must be feeling how he would like to have the tee shot of Dow Finsterwald, who's out in the middle. Not only must you play the natural terrain, the beauty and the toughness of the country club here at Brookline, Massachusetts, but you today must also play a buffeting, non-conforming wind, a wind that is uh, certainly not true. At times it swirls kicks up dust from the racetrack that surrounds the 18th fairway. Finsterwald will shoot first. He is just slightly farther out than was Arnold Palmer. Dow in nine iron territory. There's a tree guarding the right front of this green. So the boys shooting to the left rear of the green are trying to hook the ball or draw it slightly. And with that wind, it's sometimes hard to control when you do that. Vince Wall's shot will be long, comes over the back and into the crowd. And I believe that the crowd perhaps stopped the ball before it got in serious trouble back here. Jackie Cupid, a two-shot lead in the field now, playing on the 71st of a 72-hole tournament. His ball is not in the sand, but it is in a stand of grass three to four inches long. He must carry the ball about 130 to 35 yards. So you can imagine how tough this shot is. Two, he will not have a level stance. He'll have an uphill stance. It'll give him a tendency to hook the ball. Can't quite get comfortable. He hits it short of the trap in front of the green. Well, he could have been thinking many things. He knows he has a two-shot lead on everyone in the field. He might have been playing Keith Green and Bud Palmer. Here's Arnold Palmer after a good drive on 18. He's out in the middle of the fairway with a rather difficult shot into this elevated green. The difficulty mainly because of the wind. About 155 yards. It's going to be on the green, but to the right. Is it? Oh, it just gets on. That wind started pushing it back. It just got on. Lays himself, I would say, about a good 40 foot putt. And to 17 and check her. Jackie Cupid out in front of the green. His ball is 
65 yards from the pin. As he looks up to the green, he is below it. This is a par four hole. He was in trouble with his tee shot. Now this is his third shot. Good line of flight. On these very fast greens, that ball comes over, comes off into the collar by about 18 inches. How big now does that short putt that Arnold Palmer missed here on this hole look? The fortunes of golf, the ebb and tide of victory and defeat. You know, holding championships is one of a number of functions of the United States Golf Association. The USGA is an organization of several thousand golf and country clubs. And as the governing body of American golf, the USGA makes the basic rules of the game, such as the rules for play, for handicapping, for golf balls and clubs, and for amateur status. And then, too, the USGA has a scientific department called the Green Section, whose turf grass experts give advice on golf course maintenance. And this is a behind-the-scenes service, which has not only helped to condition courses for championships, but has benefited golfers everywhere. Here's Finster Wall's chip. Dow is now lying three on this par four hole. Finster Wall was six over par this afternoon on the front side of 41. On the back side, he is two over coming to here. So he's eight over for this round. No one will equal or break par today in the 36 holes of play. Jackie Cupid, who will come to the rear of the green and use his mallet-headed putter off the collar, is leading the tournament. He is seven over par for the day. Should he be able to par this and 18, he would wind up with a 291 total. The best score in is Julius Boros, nine over, 293. Tony Lima at 295 is in. Twenty-six foot shot. Oh, he leaves himself a tough putt coming back. This is the one thing that I believe Cupid was considering when he stood back in that bunker for his second shot, making sure that he did not double bogey the hole. Now he has a real pressure putt left. Arnold Palmer, when he missed the short putt here, went to nine over par. Paul Harney is in 10 over. Bruce Crampton's in at 295. Billy Maxwell, 295. Dow Finsterwald from four and a half feet. A very true putt for a par four on the 17th hole. Mr. Wall stays eight over par for today, 16 over par for the tournament, which would give him a 300 total for the 72 holes. Prior to the tournament, conjectures were that the score winning it might be at 280. Some said they'd take 282 and try it. I remember Sam Sneed said he'd take 284 and not play. Well, he was pretty close because if Cupid wins it, the best he could make would be 292 if he makes this putt and pars 18. He is putting for a bogey five. And if he misses this, you can start thinking about ties in the U.S. Open of 1963. The putt appears to be three and a half feet long. He missed it. So that means that Arnold Palmer putting on 18 here. What's he got there, bud? Oh, he left himself about five to six feet, I would say. Maybe five at the most. Here's 
Cupid. Double bogey six on the 17th hole for Jackie Cupid. And that means that Julie Boros in with nine under par. Cupid and Lima and Palmer all tied at the moment for the championship. Palmer left himself a tough putt up there on 18. Let's go to Bud Palmer and we'll cover that action along with Palmer and Refram. Well, you're seeing uh, Dean Refram line one up, as you mentioned. Julie Burris is in the clubhouse with 293. He is a former U.S. Open winner. As Dean Refram putts here. Refram is out of it. I'll give you some other scores as he's putting here. Paul Harney in a 295 at 295. Billy Maxwell, Bruce Crampton, Tony Lima. Nice putt by Dean Refram. At 296, Gary Player and Walter Bercamo. Refram will probably tap this in. That's a five for Refram. A bogey five. Puts him plus 18. And the roar you hear goes up as Arnold Palmer looks at the scoreboard and for the first time here, though you heard it before, the crowd on 18 realizes that Jackie Cupid picked up that double bogey on 17 and now it's all tied up. So if Arnold Palmer sinks this putt, he will go into a first place tie with Julie Burris. Here's Jackie Cupid driving on 18, falling right behind. Arnold Palmer. Arnold Palmer now going up as you hear in the background the whop of Jackie Cupid striking his drive. Arnold Palmer lining this up. Don't forget Arnold missed that short putt on 17. It was about the same for a bogey. If he makes this, he ties about five feet with Julie Burris who's in the clubhouse. A leaf from these large elms disturbs him. Don't blame it, he walks away from it. There was a elm leaf came down from these lovely trees that guard this 18th green of this beautiful traditional course here at Brookline. This putt for a tie with Julie Burris. Burris is in the clubhouse at 293. Great pressure put by Arnold Palmer, and as he relieves, he puts him into a tie at 293 with Julie Burris. Now, it all depends what happens here with Jackie Cupid. If Jackie Cupid can birdie this final hole, he will win it. But if he pars it, he'll go into a tie. And we'll have more of the action in this final round of the 63 USG Open Championship in just a moment. The ball does fly out of there with little control. He also has to contend with this tremendous elm I've mentioned, which overhangs this 18th green by about 25 feet. And you can see the indecision as he goes from one club to the other. He knows he has to get down in two once he gets on. Perhaps a birdie. Oh, a birdie. He'd win it. It's in the air. He's going for the pin. Bounds on. There it is. And he has about a 15-foot putt, I would say. Jackie Cupid, a tremendous shot. Has He's had two bogeys and a par. If he sinks this putt, ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at your U.S. Open champion for 1963, young Jackie Cupid. If he misses the putt and pars it, he'll be tied with Burris and Arnold Palmer. We'll have a three-way playoff. Went for it boldly, did not allow enough for that little left break. It broke off on him. And he ties. That brings him in at 293. So we'll have a three way playoff. Here at Brookline, certainly has not been taken over by these pros because the 
winning score or the tying score at 293 was nine over par. At 294, 10 over was Paul Harney, 295, Billy Maxwell, Bruce Crampton, and Tony Lima. Those are the winners you see, all finished nine over par, that is for the four rounds. Harney was 10 over, as I just mentioned. And 295, I'll go over it again, Billy Maxwell, Bruce Crampton, and Tony Lima. 296, Gary Player and Walter Bercamo. 297, Dan Sykes. At 300, Don January, Dow Finsterwild. 302, Mike Fetchick and Lionel Hebert. And also, Bobby Nichols. At 303 was Bob Charles. 304 was Dave Marr and Gardner Dickinson. At 305 was Otto Greiner. Wishers and autograph hounds convoy the players to the practice ground on Sunday afternoon. The golden anniversary of the 1913 Open, another three-way playoff. Swinging from left to right, Palmer, Cupid, Boris. We're almost ready to go, 18 holes of course. Julius Boris, 43 years old, originally from Connecticut, always at his best in the rich, important tournaments. Arnold Palmer, 33, from La Trobe, Pennsylvania. He's involved in a playoff for the Open for the second straight year. Jackie Cupid, 25, a native of Longview, Texas. He has five older brothers who are all golf pros. It's an ideal day for golf. Saturday's high winds are gone. Only a mild breeze is moving across Brookline's ancient acres. The scoring could be quite low today. By the way, more than 12,000 fans are on hand. An enormous crowd for a playoff. Palmer is off poorly. He plays his third from the rough to the right of the first green. And he's left it very short. Cupid lies two off the back edge. He's gauged that slippery slope just right. Par for Cupid and Boris, but Palmer's dead. Slides by and he falls a stroke behind. Arnold's a bit under the weather today with an intestinal disorder. The third, an exacting par four, proves to be a most decisive hole. Cupid misplays his third after hooking his approach, and now he'll be playing four from a green side bunker. Those greens are really fast now. Palmer's third. And that's going to be long. Cupid, a six. Two over par. Palmer. A five. One over par. Boris, a solid par four, and he goes out in front. After increasing his lead with a birdie on the fourth, Julius sets up another birdie on the fifth with a pitcher postcard nine iron about a yard from the hole. Palmer hitting a nine. It lands and dies on the front portion of the green. He and Cupid, the first man to play as a coach here, both lie some 40 feet below the cup. Cupid, he'll have to wrap this one firmly to get it up the slope. It's got the line. A sensational bay by Jackie Cupid and the gallery roars. Boris now. He gets his birdie. On the par 3 seventh, Boris lobs a delicate wedge pitch from the collar of rough. He's been masterful with that shot today. He's also holding those critical three and four footers. Here's that little 
little soft wedge from the rough again on the eighth. How well he plays that shot. Another good par. Julia seems well in command of this playoff now. Our route to still another birdie on the ninth for a 33 out. Three shots ahead of Palmer, four ahead of Cupid. On the dangerous 11th, trouble for Cupid in the heavy rough off the tee. And in the rough once more on his long approach over the water hazard. He's headed for a five. For Palmer, the 11th is a disaster. He's headed for a seven after hooking his tee shot into the woods and taking three to recover. Arnold's out of the playoff now. A last-ditch rally on the final four holes being too little and too late. Boris just misses another birdie on the 11th, but his par widens his lead to seven shots on Palmer, five on Cupid. On the 13th, however, Boris faltered for the first time, pulling his second into the woods. His third, from a very tight lie, trickled only a few yards forward. His fourth, wedged over a bunker, ran on and on and finally over the green. Playing five. And that tidy chip pulls him together. Down in six, two over par. Despite this misadventure, Boris leads Cupid by three shots. Settling down immediately, he maintained that margin as the players came to the 17th. Here, after a fine iron shot by Boris, 15 feet from the flag, Cupid comes through with an equally accurate shot. If Cupid can sink this birdie putt, it will really tighten things up. Right in the middle. Boris now. He's matched Cupid's birdie. That was the stroke of a champion, that breaking 15-foot pressure putt. Boris moves down the home hole with a secure three-shot lead. After a drive that splits the fairway, an intelligently played approach carries well over the guarding bunkers and safely onto the back of the green. Julius Boris has the 1963 Open Championship wrapped up now. He has played outstandingly good golf today. His chipping and putting have been particularly fine. He's had 10 one-putt greens. A well-earned ovation greets his arrival at the 18th green. Down the slope goes his long approach putt. Close to the hole. A four for a 70, one under four. The new champion is congratulated by Palmer and Cupid. At the trophy presentation, the 1963 champion chats with the man who carried the dark book line half a century before him, Francis Weeman, America's first great golf hero. Samuel Wolcott, president of the country club, extols the winner. What's Julius Boris thinking about? Very possibly his first victory in the Open 11 years ago at Northwood in Dallas. He was 32 then, in his second year as a professional. Today at 43, He's the oldest American ever to win the Open. Receiving the trophy for the second time, he looks fit and fresh. But then a man is likely to be at his best when through skill and purpose, he has captured the world's premier championship. <laughs> 